since he was a kid, you know, I've always had this feeling like, you know, there's, there's something, he's, he's got something. Like, what is it? What is this thing that, that Matthew holds? He's the only person I know who will, who will tell you with 100% that he was born to do this thing and that his purpose in life is to ride big, heavy waves. And he knows, like, he was born to do this thing. Watching Matthew move from like a, a kind of a contest surfing Grom guy, slowly maturing or slowly becoming this thing that he was born to be. It's like watching someone coming into their destiny, you know, a sense of heritage and legacy, you know, becoming the truest, fullest version of himself, which is an incredibly gifted big wave rider. I think the best who's ever come out of South Africa, hands down. play this game uh, where we used to go and sit as close as we could and 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 work out if the wave was going to reach us you know and then it was a big guy that was a big one <laughs> that was my earliest memory and after that was putting him on a boogie board and pushing him into waves when he was tiny you know? he always had affinity for the water I actually still was trying to rack my brain the other day when I actually first met from that but Definitely, I remember they used to call him the pterodactyl because he was super tall and lanky and he used to come streaking down from the long beach and, and as he was a, I think just when you got into like kind of barrel surfing, you'd come to Kranz just at the end of a session, most of the kids would, they're like, must surf long beach, you know, get five turns to the beach, but then he would come, he'd be one of the only other kids that would come and get barreled with us for a little bit and I think that's kind of where you got the love affair for tube riding. Matt and I have come a long way since the, the early years at Long Beach. Every year we do a couple of trips together, you know, he travels, I travel, but you know, I think we're always chasing similar waves and as a photographer and as a big wave surfer, we, you know, we have a very mutually like, you know, beneficial relationship. He's also one of my best mates now, so it's really exciting that we get to, um, you know, live this journey together. You know, right now he's really, really breaking out into the international scene. I mean, he actually, in my eyes, he's been doing it for a good few years already, but I think now with this near swell and off the back of the Jaws 2016, you know, he really solidified his position in the world's big waves, you know, eyes. We've all seen how he's really like, you know, when there's a big swell somewhere, you know, the big names are there, but Matt's like sitting deeper than the guys and he's, you know, getting some of the best waves. It's great to see a guy from South Africa really stepping up there. Um, I think the waves in Cape Town, and specifically here in Cormac, have really made him who he is. Cormac is the ideal place with anyone wanted to grow up and get into big waves. The conditions here are so heavy and raw and unpredictable. There's just such an incredible amount of waves that can kind of school you and kind of educate you as a surfer. And all of them are, are heavy water spots, you know, they're colds, um, you know, they, re they require you know, some solid paddling and, and good surfing, you know. It really trains people for raw, rugged, in a big wave charge and I think having Matt taking that now to the international scene where you've got perfect waves like Nias and Jaws, it really now like he steps up, you know, and he's able to like really be way ahead of some of the other guys. Yeah, it's, it's wild here and I think it's an amazing preparation ground for someone who wants to be a global slab hunter.
think that the day of Matt's life was a day at Jaws. And I knew he was going to surf it. I knew it was going to be a monster and I hadn't heard from him, you know. And I was really stressing and eventually I got hold of uh, Simon Lowe. Now by that stage it was pretty much maxing. All the who's who of the zoo were out there. I mean, all the mainos. But they weren't catching any waves. I mean, Matt was the only guy. He, he pretty much him and Albie were the only two guys, in my opinion, that were were really going. And I, I said, "Hello, Simon," and he said, "Bro, you must be proud of your son. He totally dominated today." He said, you know, like, and I just started to cry because the relief just was oh, that he was still okay. It was as I knew inherent in that Matt was fine. After the walk up the rocks, new board, paddle, re paddle out. Matt got three waves. You know, most people got none. So that's all I've got to say about it. That's it. It's wildly conflicting emotions. You know, I'm super, super proud of him. I know how good he is. I know that if anyone can handle it, he can. But I also have this terrible fear. I've had it all my life. Probably my biggest fear I've ever had in my life is losing Matt. You know, with all of us, I'm not quite sure what the future holds. You know, I have hopes and dreams for, for Matt. And for me, it'll be amazing to see a South African like Matt on the Big Web World Tour joining Twiggy and, and or maybe taking over when Twiggy steps away. But it's just exciting that, that he could have that option. It all comes down to how they're going to do things there. But I think if I can just see him at these big swells and representing us and, and people, I think that would be an amazing thing. Matt's got his own goals. You know, he knows where he's going and wherever he gets to is where he gets to. I mean, he's not phased whether it's, whether it's world champion or not. You know, he, 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 he certainly has the ability to be on the world tour. I have no doubt about that, but he's got his own agenda and he's going to follow that no matter what. When you look at Matthew's skill level and uh, what he has accomplished thus far, it doesn't make sense that he hasn't had more exposure than he has or that he's not able to compete on a large scale in a big wave world tour. But you have to believe that he's been set aside for a different purpose for it. One that I can't presently imagine, but there's a reason and a purpose for it. So I can't wait to see what it is.